Thank you for choosing CalISO Corporation for your training needs. This short video clip is presented to introduce you to some basic information on the requirements of the Code of Federal Regulations, Food and Drug Administration, 21 CFR 58, Good Laboratory Practice for Non-Clinical Laboratory Studies. This part of the Code of Federal Regulations prescribes good laboratory practices for conducting non-clinical laboratory studies that support or are intended to support applications for research or marketing permits for products regulated by the FDA, including but not limited to food and color additives, human and animal drugs, and devices for human use. The sections of 21 CFR 58 are as follows. Subpart A, General Provisions, which doesn't contain any requirements but includes the scope, definitions, applicability to studies performed under grants and contracts, and inspection of a testing facility, which simply states that an authorized employee of the FDA at reasonable times and in a reasonable manner may have the authority to inspect the facility. Subpart B, Organization and Personnel. This section details the competency necessary for staff conducting the studies as well as the responsibilities of the various groups involved in the study and include personnel, testing facility management, study director, and quality assurance unit. Subpart C, Facilities. This section details the requirements for the various types of facilities that might facilitate a study and include general requirements, animal care facilities, animal supply facilities, facilities for handling test and control articles, laboratory operation areas, and specimen and data storage facilities. Subpart D, Equipment. This section details the appropriate design and maintenance of machinery used in conducting studies and include equipment design, maintenance and calibration of equipment. Subpart E, Testing Facility Operation. Standard operating procedures are written procedures that need to be in place for the facility and the following requirements must also be included. Reagents and solutions, and animal care. Subpart F, Test and Control Articles. This section details the requirement for established and documented procedures for testing and control articles and includes test and control article characterization, test and control article handling, and mixtures of articles with carriers. Subpart G, Protocol for the Conduct of a Non-Clinical Laboratory Study. This section establishes the requirement for a written protocol to be available prior to the study and that the study shall be conducted according to the protocol. So there's a section for writing the protocol and then there's a section for conduct of non-clinical laboratory study. Subpart H and I are reserved. Subpart J, Records and Reports, Reporting of Non-Clinical Laboratory Study Results, A Final Report Shall Be Prepared, Storage and Retrieval of Records and Data, Storage Shall Allow Expedient Retrieval of All Data, and Finally, Retention of Records. Records must be stored for at least two years following the date on which an application for research or marketing permit, but this requirement does not supersede record retention requirements of any other regulation. Subpart K is the largest part of this entire regulation and is disqualification of testing facilities. The section details the reasons and steps that are taken when a facility fails to comply with the requirements of good laboratory practice regulations and includes purpose, grounds for disqualification, notice of an opportunity for hearing on proposed disqualification, final order on disqualification, 
actions upon disqualification, public disclosure of information regarding disqualification, alternative or additional actions to disqualification, suspension or termination of a testing facility by a sponsor, and reinstatement of a disqualified testing facility. We certainly hope you enjoy this online training experience. Please proceed to the beginning of your CalISO course to receive a more in-depth training on this FDA regulation. If you should have further questions or concerns, please see our Frequently Asked Question page on our website.